You often ask, what gear do you guys every day carry, AKA EDC? But not just EDC. We also often get asked what we keep in our vehicles. What's our most used gear at the range? And last but not least, what gear we use while exploring the great outdoors. That's all coming today as we give you the ultimate guide to the gear we actually use. All right, guys, welcome to the freaking show today. Um, a ton to cover because we get a lot of questions. I'm sure yeah. you do. I know I do about, yep. you know, what, what gear do you guys carry? You know, what's your this or, or what's your that? Yeah. And so today's really going to be like an all encompassing guide to all the stuff that we actually carry. Um, it's going to go quick because there's a ton to cover. The video will still probably be an hour, but um, we are going to be looking at EDC. Okay. Uh, we're going to be looking at range gear. We're going to be looking at uh, truck gear, specifically my, my truck, given that you don't live here. And, um, and then sort of general purpose outdoor gear, if you will, like, um, you know, stuff that I kind of have in my essentials list uh, as I go and explore the outdoors. So that's what we're going to cover. Um, so Gara sponsor in the video, we'll talk about them a little bit yeah. and some of their new stuff that they've got as we go along the video. So yeah. um, why don't you jump okay. into EDC? Yeah, uh, we'll go gun first, right? Uh, Glock 19X frame with the factory cut G45 slide okay. for an acro. Okay. Kind of cool, right? Uh, done up by Juliet Tango Customs for all the stipple. He's a local guy oh, in Phoenix. Yeah. I see yeah. a comment on our stuff sometimes. Uh -huh. Real nice dude. Uh, the holster I primarily use is a Tenacore Kurtum is okay. what this is. Okay. I do rotate though, depending on how I'm feeling. Have you ever run one of these, right? Like um, the trigger guard holsters? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Here and there. This is probably 80% of the time I run this. Oh, wow. Just okay. clips on. It's the most minimal holster you can get. No doubt. Really brings the footprint down, right? And then last but not least, if I do feel like running a light, or in this case, a comp from vantage point with the light built in, we can throw that on and then I'll run it out of the tier one concealed MSP. So, okay. and I've been rotating those other two ones, 90% of usage. I just picked this up, been running it just because of all the guns we review. Sure. It's a CCW for, you know, 50 different guns. Okay, right? okay. Right so. Next up for me, carry a pocket knife, Medford Micro Praetorian Drop Point, local guy to Phoenix. I've had this knife for eight years. It's been to 48 states. It's been all over. So, sweet. Hellbent holsters with a little money clip this is what I use to carry all my cards. They just kind of fan out. Look at, and you. Look at you with all your money and cards. Like that. And yeah, these are all ones. So, yeah. Yeah. $13. Hey, they'll get the job done though. So, um, I always have headphones, Beats. Okay. Yeah, I just because I'm always on phone calls and typing or you know driving whatever, okay. throw these in, use them. I actually wear these at the range a lot too, so I'll put these in, listen to music, and then put my ear oh, pro on. Okay. So I can double the ear pro, but also get some entertainment. Okay. Right? Sure. Sure. You're more sad that I'm not listening to voices of yourself, right? You. That's could, why you got sad. You could listen to this voice as you shoot. And I could put in things like low and left and like, you know. That'll be it, right? Advise. Um, I also always have sunglasses, Oakley's, uh, with the prism lenses. And I always have a hat. Seems silly, but that's part of it. And then um, for watches, today I'm rocking my Panerai 1389 sub, right? I also probably 99% of the time rock my Tudor. Yeah. Pelago Cell HD. You've really so, gravitated towards that. I'm, I'm in love and enamored with this watch. Yeah. So yeah. I, I rarely take it off when I do wear it. Yeah. So. And then um, something that's a little personal, near and dear to me, I've been fortunate to work with some special operations units throughout my gun career, I guess you could say. And I had a chance to work with the Aussie SAS dudes. Yeah. They gave me a challenge coin. This is in my pocket everywhere I go. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's just the boys over there, I hit it off with them. Really good guys, we talk often. Just a little sentimental thing you it's like to have It's a sentimental thing that I, I mean, most military guys I never served carry a challenge coin. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Uh, to almost like as a compliment if something amazing happens with someone they engage with, like a it, One they you. can give away, yeah. but also if they're with other military buddies and you're at a bar and everyone slaps a coin down and someone doesn't have a coin, uh. they owe everyone a round of drinks. Oh, well, hell yeah. So this is kind of cool, sentimental, says Australia on one side, special air service regiment on the other. Sweet. So it's just a little uh, sentimental thing I always carry. I mean, it's been beat up. It's been through the wash. 
been all over the place. So yeah, cool. Yeah. But I that's like what I carry every day. Okay. Minus my belt. Yes. The Segera Inner Light Belt, okay. which you have here. This is just like a kid mm -hmm. size version. I'm just going to steal it from you for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I wear the exact same belt, just an adult size. Yeah. Yours is extra small. Mine is extra large. Yeah. So. It's a Santa version. Yeah. I, I guess you could say a little bit leaner than Santa, but that's the belt I wear every single day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Okay. Cool. I'm up. Okay, first thing I carry with me every day pretty much is this animal. Um, <laughs> he's with me most of the time. Uh, he's uh, very uh, having fun out here today. But besides that weapon, the other one, because it's my carry gun, it's actually still hot um, and covered in a little bit of belly fur here um, <laughs> and, and dust and things. Uh, this would be my carry gun. So this is a Nighthawk Treasure. We have done a full review on this. So this was made purposely to be a carry gun for me. This is really not a range gun or, you know, uh, you know whatever, competition gun. So it is a uh, single stack, basically officer length gun. It is chambered in 9 mil. I just prefer shooting 9 mil, period. Um, and I get a little bit more capacity, especially out of a small frame gun like that. It was built in an aluminum frame to be a little bit lighter. I've got the ambidextrous safety. Um, it does have the iOS cut up top. I run the Holosun EPS carry. Um, I know some people are so funny because they're like, bro, that amazing gun and a piece of shit dot. And it's like, okay, hey, dude, like I don't say I don't say this to try to like boost my ego or anything, but it's like if I could buy a Nighthawk for my carry gun, like, do you think <laughs> like like I needed to skimp the extra 150 bucks on a, on a lesser dot? It's like, no, 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 that's my dot because that's the dot that I wanted. Like, and it's it that runs. straightforward. Yeah. And if you were to really look at the top of this, you'll see rust on the screws. You know why? Because I carry it and I sweat in this, and this is my carry gun. Yeah. It's like, right? So that's just like Jake juice that's gotten down to those screws, right? And turn them a little bit of orange. Stop looking at me in the face when you say that. Oh, so look where I want, right? Um, holsters, nothing notable. Um, get whatever you want. So, um, <laughs> okay. So I do carry an extra mag. Uh, uh, usually like federal HST 124 uh, plus yeah, 124. stuff. The uh, belt, I guess, becomes sort of a part of the conversation. So I also carry the, uh, or, or wear the Segura Light and her Velcro belt. They have this little mag sleeve. So you can run this if you want. Basically, you would just throw your mag into the little sleeve. It's gonna be a little tough to do without me wearing it, but basically you can get the idea. Basically the little sleeve and the mag just indexes in the sleeve, and then you can index your mag and reload from there. So you don't have to carry dedicated Kydex or something like that on your belt if you don't want. Do whatever makes you happy. Just saying that's a low pro alternative yeah. way to carry an extra mag. Okay, let's talk about knives. I'm not a knife guy, but I do like knives. So uh, typically these days I have this on me. So this was a gift and I'm horrible about remembering the name. So this is a Fanatic Edge Omen version two. This is the Damascus blade. It's a really slick From our buddy piece. Brandon, right? Buddy Brandon um, decided he was probably just hammered <laughs> and uh, regrets giving me this knife. But hey, it's uh, possessions like 90% of the law or something like that, you know? Yeah. So that is with me now. Um, <laughs> So if I typically, or, or in the times maybe I'm in an environment where I can't have a gun on me or just doesn't make sense or something like that, I carry this. This is our uh, actually kind of like 1911 Syndicate Edition knife. Uh, we do not sell these. These are only for our real estate clients. Um, it's a cool little piece. It's fixed blade. Um, it has served me well in life. So don't make that mean anything that it doesn't mean. <laughs> but also it might mean something. Well, whatever. So um, next, light. I don't carry a weapon light um, because I don't. Same. Um, I just historically Unless. don't find that it's necessary. I have no issue with people that do. I don't think you're weird if you do carry one. Maybe I'm weird for not. But most of the time when I, basically all of the time when I need a light, I need an admin light. So I got the little cloud defensive. That's all it is, little admin light. It's not a weapon light or anything, but um, it's rechargeable. And most of the time when I pull out a light, I'm trying to find the age of like a freaking water heater. Yeah. Um, you know, so we'll it's show like, in a house. I don't need an X300 to be like 2009. <laughs> like it's just <laughs> unnecessary. Um, so we've got that. I already mentioned the Segura belt uh, wa uh, wallet. I don't know, I guess if we're talking wallets, uh, this was a, a lovely, uh, actually a, a gift uh, from in, in Zurich. 
uh, I bought a watch from um, a nice lady, from right? A beautiful lady in uh, Zurich, and this was her probably thank you for me being a sucker and buying that watch. Um, <laughs> you just made her monthly commission, exactly. Yeah. But it's great and it's patinaed, and I love it. Uh, watches. Let's see. So really, two things. I'm not actually wearing my uh, watch that I typically wear around these days. Um, this one's in from our buddies at Wolven. All the kind of stuff we're covering, by the way, the Panerai's and the the Tudors and all that kind of stuff. They carry all of yep. that. Uh, we'll try to throw a link below if you guys are ever looking for a cool timepiece. These days, I do rotate. I would say I'm fairly seasonal on watches, but right now, uh, the day starts in the gym and walking the dog and doing all that kind of stuff. And I've got on my Seiko Arnie. So Arnie's the street name. That's not the, it's part of the prospect series. It's like S SN409 is yeah, the reference number. like it's number. kind of a weird uh, modeling number. But um, so this is a very iconic watch. Uh, it's called the Arnie because Arnold Schwarzenegger wore it in Predator, Commando, Running Deal, or uh, Running Man, Raw Deal. Cameron wore it directing the Terminator. I mean, it's been to the Arctic. It's been to the Everest. Like it's an iconic, it's the world's first hybrid digital and analog watch. Yeah. It's amazing, it's solar power. I love this thing. I've got like an unhealthy love, love affair with this watch, yeah. okay? So I get through sort of my active part of my day and then I swap over. God, I feel Oof. like such an asshole, like no, pulling all this that. stuff out. We get asked about this stuff, we just aren't very yeah. open about so it. So I, I will not wear this at the range. You guys will not see this in videos unless it's at like a bar or something like that, but I will not shoot in this. Uh, it's an IWC um, Pilots Chronograph. Uh, it's on their Jubilee style bracelet, um, blue dial. I love this watch. They make this in a uh, 41 and a 43. I got the 41, fits me a little bit better. I have an absolute love affair with this watch. Um, more so than any other watch that I've ever owned. I love yeah. it, but because of the chrono and just the the complicated nature of that movement, I ain't throwing recoil into that mix. Because, yeah, which some people would argue you shouldn't, in automatic watches to, all together, you shouldn't shoot yeah. in them. Yeah. I've shot exclusively in this Panerai and this Tudor for years at this point, mm -hmm. and they keep time great. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, that's why you baby that one a little bit. Yeah, that is kind of my, I wouldn't say safe queen, but it is safe queen from the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so anyway, that's EDC. We're moving on. Guys, we'll be back with the video momentarily to talk about truck gear, essential gear. Um, but before we do that, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, um, this dog uh, needs food. And the only way we can afford to feed this employee of the 1911 syndicate if, if you guys donate to the Patreon. But most of the Patreon goes to feeding him and giving him whiskey and things like that, right? So you can go to the link down in the video description. Um, we also have behind the scenes content, all kinds of fun stuff there. And the 1911 syndicate is a real estate company. Uh, some of you have heard that. Some of you use us for real estate. We do appreciate that. Really helps keep us in business so we can keep bringing you this channel because truth be told, um, YouTube doesn't pay the bills to uh, keep this channel going. Mostly real estate does. So we appreciate that. Go to 1911syndicate.com, onto the truck. Okay, let's talk about truck gear. The first thing that is almost always in my truck is trash that you leave in my truck. And you know it's true. You know it's true. Who have some fucking Cheeto wrappers, some bullshit that'll I leave in my truck. Eat Cheetos. What did you just say to me? <laughs> you imagine I get all across. Okay. All right, so let's start back seat. So the first thing I keep in my uh, like little pouch in the passenger seat um, is a tomahawk. What do I have this for? God knows what. Um, but uh, this is a little like collab piece we did with Nate Summers. He's our bladesmith. He's done a lot of cool stuff. It's good. We perfectly kind of have this where like it's beveled. So if you needed to wedge this, really this is more of a breaching thing is, is why I have it. Um, like if you came across a, a vehicle and you need to try to get someone out so you could, you know, use this as a little breaching service and, and hammer this in. Um, it's a great piece. Uh, I love this tomahawk. Um, I've got one other from him that I occasionally use as well. Let's do gun bag. Everyone always likes to talk about all the cool gun stuff. So, all right, here we go. You guys are going to be grossly disappointed in um, this setup, okay? Some people argue, they're like, they want their Nods gun, they want all this, this crazy stuff in the truck. I'm like, look, I know the reality is this might not get, get taken in every night. Hello, oh, Um so I'm not trying to leave uh, NFA items and suppressors, all that kind of stuff in my vehicle. So I leave my worst gun in my vehicle. <laughs> Something that I bought off of a random dude. This gun is like horrible, but also works. Um, no, I didn't get the I'm your Huckleberry dust cover. <laughs> that was not a pickup from me. Um, that was the dude that put it on before me. Can you imagine if he was a subscriber to the channel and he sees this and he's like, that's my gun, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, 
So it's like a sh- like kind of shitty Magpul sling. It's a Sig um, AR. What I mean, I mean literally a Sig M400. Right. This is not like. But I've never had a malfunction on this gun at the same time. So it's like, I have no reason to fault it, but it's like, look, it's a, it's a pistol setup. Um, I've got an LPVO. That way I don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that. It's down and dirty, man. Like it, it really is down and dirty. And I'm just trying to get it to do truck gun things. I'm not trying to survive the, the apocalypse with that. I'm just trying to get my butt home this is the reality. This is an LBT bag, by the way, or LBX. LBX. So, LBX, right, yeah. Um, Keep a couple extra mags uh, in here, just so we've got those. This pouch, again, a pair of gloves. These are shitty gloves. They're not even shooting gloves. They're like baseball gloves or something. A um, little bit of lube, uh, Surefire handheld light. Top pouch, a few Surefire batteries. A couple triple A's for some reason. I can't, not entirely sure to be honest. There's nothing in here that takes triple A batteries. And that's it. So that's the gun bag. That's more of like your your fighting bag. But that's really not the main stuff that's in my vehicle. Let me grab a different bag. Okay, another thing. This is a recent addition that I'm actually kind of into is the um, Segera vehicle equipment panel. So this just straps to you. I'll show you the base version of what it looks like. Basically, it's a little panel like this and you clip it under your um, headrest, right? You basically just run that through like the little bars that, that run underneath there. Yes, my truck is dirty, everyone. Um, so basically then on this, you can just um, web on whatever you want, you know? So you could do like a little med pouch AR mag. So you'll see on mine. So I've got a little AR mag um, that I just took out of my, my little gun bag there. And then this is really just a trauma kit. So it's a real simple system, right? You basically just unplug that, rip and go, right? So it's a straightforward system, uh, it, you know, it's really cool. And then I just have a little trauma kit in there. I think, um, it, and, and some of you might be going on the back of your own headrest, I don't know if you guys ever think about this, but you never actually rest your head when you're driving. So this doesn't get in your way whatsoever. And you don't even know that it's there, so. Basically, that just goes there. Tourniquet, bed pouch. It's a really cool little system. So um, that's cool. I think those just came out. I think they sent us some of the first ones. And then this is what I would label my get home bag, okay? Everyone likes to talk about bug out bags. A friend of mine who's like a real emergency preparedness guy who has the credentials to back it up, um, basically said, you're you're not bugging out, you're trying to get home. Like like home is where you're trying to go. So really this bag is meant to be low profile and just get my butt back to my house with the essentials. Not a weapons bag whatsoever. That's if I needed to grab an AR, or my EDC gun, that's what I have those for. So it's real low pro, it's just an Osprey bag, nothing fancy whatsoever. Um, keep a little canteen in there. To my understanding, the, all the all the like uh, the girls are in love with Stanley stuff these days. I'd like to tell them that I got this shit before it was popular. Right. So if anyone wants to pay me like a premium, like 10 X for this, Did that ever get you, a date? you know what? It might, it could, it could is, is how I look at it. So let's talk about what we got inside a different med kit. So this is really just boo-boo kit, right? This is just like cuts and scrapes and things that aren't, um, you got shot or something like that. Right. So basic med kit, let's kind of pull things out one by one here. This is basically a little jump start for my truck, right? So if my battery goes dead, I can jump my own truck with this little battery pack. This is a gift, I believe, from our friend Buster. In here, I even have a note in here. What did I, um, ah, yes. So in here, this is a combination. Uh, I have a different uh, tourniquet, got some toilet paper, got some Tylenol, got some super glue. And uh, and then over there, I've got some, uh, basically it's like a, like an anti-diarrhea thing. You know, like if you were out, and you drink from a river or something and you're shitting your brains out. It's like something just to try to like slow that down so that you can get your butt back home, right? So that's kind of just some like kind of med-ish, <clears throat> I guess. It's my little food pouch, a couple gel packs, um, some hydration, little caffeine things that you could drop into your bottle if you just need a little energy and like two or three cliff bars. Again, I'm not trying to survive in the wilderness for a month. I'm just trying to get my butt back home trash bag could use it for poncho whatever you might need a trash bag for that's just a little thing keeps sun kind of off my my neck um in here this is lighting so i've got a headlamp that runs on AAA batteries so i've got a few backup batteries 
Got a Surefire handheld light with just a uh, box of these Surefire, AKA just lithium 123A batteries. So that's my illumination source. Uh, a backup beanie, because it's cold environment, and a backup pair of socks, right? Um, those are things that, hey man, if you can keep your, your feet warm and your head warm, that goes a long way in climates like we live in. These little pouches, by the way, um, are from, I don't know how this got all fucked up. It's from Eberly stock. I just like being able to comp compartmentalize uh, my gear into little separate sections. So that's what that is. Um, this is just a little bit of cash in a waterproof container. A little bit of cash can go a long way if you need to, you know, pay someone off to get your butt back home. And this, this little pouch is from Kafaru. And here, what do we got? Life straw, a little mobile water bladder that you can put stuff in that doesn't take up much space. We've got a little um, emergency blanket, paracord, a map of the mountains in my area, a carabiner for no reason whatsoever, a pocket knife, okay, and uh, a couple of little mini rolls of duct tape. Right, pretty straightforward. And last thing in my little get home bag, compass, water purification tabs, waterproof matches, little fire stick, kind of a beefy one, and a little Bic lighter because only the best around here. Um, that's it, like I said, that bag is not meant for me to survive the apocalypse. It's just meant to be some basic sort of 911 stuff. If I broke down in the middle of nowhere, I needed to get home or there was you know riots, the freeway's blocked and I gotta hike my butt home. Um, it's not meant to be weapons, it's meant to be the stuff you're probably more likely to need. All right guys, truck bed. Truck bed I separate from the interior. That's just science right there. I mean, how stupid is that statement I just said? I separate the truck bed from the interior. Back here, we've got a sleeping bag, um, a pretty warm one. This is also from Eberly Stock. I am uh, historically been a fan of their stuff. This is like a, you know, zero degree, like, hey, if I break down, something to keep me at least semi-warm in my vehicle. And then I got kind of my secondary, I'll call it like my secondary uh, bug out or, or get home bag. This is like my overflow. In this pouch, we've got a completely unnecessary knife, like obnoxiously, uh, just a, an obnoxious knife. Um, it's from Tops, but I have to admit, I kind of like this thing. Um, so also in the little Tops pouch here, multi-tool, multi-tool goes a long way. Also scientifically proven, makes you more of a man if you have one. Okay, getting into the, interior this uh an eberly stock bag you guys would imagine this is an eberly stock ad it's not a few years ago i hit them up and i don't remember what they said but it wasn't anything helpful um so i keep an extra little kind of lightweight shell basically like a little soft shell this is from uh katanica nothing notable whatsoever but it's relatively warm and relatively weatherproof so that's the kind of thing again in this climate i'd like to have um well, backup medical kit. Um, it's probably super expired, but like I said, most of my fresh stuff I keep in the vehicle. This is kind of like a, eh, why not? I had it, I didn't need it for anything. So just leave it in here. Um, more medical, same case. Like uh, I, I I don't, this is like kind of halfway used stuff, but it was one of those, like it's in the truck, but it's not taking up any space. So I just leave it in there. What do we got? A couple shoelaces, because you never know. A pen, a Sharpie little right in the rain notebook. And for, if life really takes a detour, the SAS survival guide, <laughs> you know, this is stuff I probably put in my truck like in like 2012, uh, when I thought the world was gonna end. Anyone remember that 2012, the, De the December, uh, the Mayan prophecy? No one remembers this? You don't remember the Mayan prophecy? I won't lie, during the Mayan prophecy, I went and stayed in Big Bear, California to get out of Los Angeles because I was reasonably confident it was gonna happen. So I was like, well, I may as well go get it on in the mountains versus in LA. Uh, the other pouch, backup pair of socks, uh, some compression shorts, just cause you know what the reality is, you had to hike your way back to the house. Chafing's a bitch. I mean, as, as goofy as that sounds, some freaking compression shorts go a long way. 
Uh, and then just a uh, up top base layer, nothing super warm, but just a little added warmth if I needed it. Okay. Uh, dog lead, this one's kind of specific to tracking. So it is, it's like 15 foot long. Um, not that I'm worried about tracking anything. It's more of just a backup dog lead. Um, ignore the tracking part. And then a backup belt. This is from, um, man, who makes these damn things? I can't remember. Learned about these from Travis Haley. I don't know. Can't even remember, but um, just a leather kind of kind of belt if I ever needed it. And then last thing, and there's just another trash bag, you know, just something, you know, a little bit of waterproofing and uh, nothing, nothing crazy. And the last thing I keep back here is some basic recovery gear. Nothing notable at all. I would say this is an area where I'm underprepared, but I'm just showing you guys the reality of the truck. Um, just some toe straps, nothing to nothing to see there. Um, tire pressure gauge, um, little truck plug kit, um, couple things. Just my jack, little flat tire kit. Just basics. Just just meant to hopefully get a a tire mobile enough to to get me back to the house. And that is everything I keep in my truck. Mine is basically a mobile range in the bed of the truck with some steel and some two by fours and all that kind of stuff. Okay, on to the next. All right, Jake, let's roll into what we take to the range, yep. whether it's outdoor, indoor, right? I have 90% of my stuff. Okay. There's some stuff is just too hard to fly with, like a range bag. Yep. Um, so I don't have my range bag, but I have one almost identical to that. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing I'm not, I, I'm missing is I have these, what are called bean bags from Windy Hill Stitchworks. Okay. that I put ammo in, Okay. so I don't gotta carry the boxes and stuff, right? So they make five, five, six ones and nine mil. Okay. So I'll load those up with ammo, throw them in there. Next thing I always have, this is a fix-it sticks pouch mm. with all the correct bits, as well as torques limiters from four pounds to 45 pounds. So always at the range, especially zero on optics, changing optics, right? Yeah, kick ass. Um, I got the little aim point tool in there too, so. Yep, yep. Second little tool kit I take has your multitasker multi-tool with all the accoutrements, the multitasker pen mm. with all the accoutrements, the gun butter penalier, right? Yeah. The lube. Helpful. Just, and a great a way to carry some extra. You oil. know what else I do with these sidebar? I put them in the storage things of my A5 butt stocks. Interesting. Right? And that fits. It fits. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Good call on that. That's that's the pro like tip that? of the video yeah. right there. I actually wrap them in paper towels and duct tape. So yeah. it's waterproof. So it's not bouncing so, around too. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then inside here too, I have just little tools as well. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to the range, even if you're not zeroing, you should probably have tools in case of malfunction and stuff. Yeah. Right? Next, Clear Eye Pro. Uh, this is actually a pair of Oakleys that I bought like 10 years ago that I got clear lenses for. Mm-hmm. So that's how long I keep sunglasses for. Right? Yeah, you're a sunglass man. I'm a sunglass guy, dude. Next up, uh, Sword and MSA neckband ear pro. These work with my bump helmet as well as no bump helmet. Um, I also take another form of ear pro, my Beats. Like I said earlier, throw those in, throw these over top, listen to music. Little med kit. This uh, is also in my vehicle. I have the identical one, but uh, this is what I throw in my range bag as well. And then. Probably the most important thing. Say, what the hell is this? I have a clipboard. It's been beat up a little bit, but this has all my zero targets as well as any targets from companies like Bear Solutions, a bunch of their shooting drills, um, some T-Rex arm stuff, any of those free downloadable targets. I print off like 10 at a time, throw them in here, and that goes to the range with me as well, just okay. kind of on top of my bag. So a little down and dirty, I don't have Everything is about 90% of what I take to the range. I'll put three mags per gun I'm shooting. So if I'm shooting an AR, I got three mags. Pistol, three mags according. Um, and that's it, Jake. Pretty pretty simple. Okay. So Solid. All right, I'll start jumping in. Um, first thing, range bag. Again, it probably appears like an Everly stock bag. Not. I've had this range bag for at least five years, and I think probably even more than that. And um, it's still going. I, I feel like it should be dead by now, but it just doesn't die. And it holds a lot of stuff, so I just keep it going. Even in four years of us doing this, it's still very functional. Oh, and I mean, this thing gets beat, beat to hell doing everything we do. Um, so I'm just going to start grabbing stuff. I got stuff that's kind of laid out all over the place. Let's start belt setup for me. So you are a battle belt guy. Actually, why don't yeah. you touch on that for Actually, a Actually, I did miss that. My bad. Um, this battle belt is Segura's new battle belt. Yeah. This is the same belt that I wear on the range, that I wear out here when we're filming, all that stuff. This new one has a new camo layer on top that we can get, obviously, classic, multi-cam. Right? Multi yeah. A couple other uh, different 
patterns that he has that he can throw on there. Those have IR reflective coating on them, which is kind of neat. And then they just load tested these for 6,000 pounds. That's so crazy. About half my body weight, but yeah, we're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's getting there though. Another yeah. two of me. Yeah, right? sure. But this is, I mean, you guys are probably tired of hearing it. We beat the hell out of these belts, both the inner light and this battle wagon, and they just continue to work and look, yeah. look new. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. If, if Segura shit cans us tomorrow, I can tell you, you're probably still going to see their belts on us. Yep. Um, so on the uh, belt note. Yeah, go ahead. I will tell you, so I've never been a battle belt guy. No, it's not I'm just not, thing. You know, and it's yeah. like to, to each their own. Whatever works for you as long as it works. Um, so I use the standard emissary belt from them at the range. And then in terms of kind of how I rock my holsters and stuff, I'm probably a bit old school and dated. So usually if it's warmer and I'm not wearing layers, um, I'll just take the little uh, uh, UBL. Safari Land thing, yep. right? Just clip it on. So rock that. Or times like now, when there's heavier layers, I'll rock like the full on thigh rig, you know? And what <laughs> I'm like 80s action movies. Yeah. So what I like about it is that all my stuff's set up on the little QLS uh -huh. forks, right? And so all I gotta do, right, is clip in and I'm ready to go. And if I'm, if I'm at a range, yes, I'm aware, I'm aware. This, this is, is just better. This is, is probably a superior system. It I is. wouldn't even deny it, but um, you know, hey, look, I, I if I'm testing three, four different guns in a day, it might be three, four different holster setups, yep. right? So I do like this. Um, in terms of mag pouches, so a tad bit of a shameless plug, but also not really, because I got to tell you, I was pretty stoked on this when these came in. So um, Sagara came out with these panels. Okay, let me, panels. let me not screw up the name of it. Um, they, they're just called the Molly Pouch Belt Adapter, right? So nothing, nothing super complicated, but basically, it's these little panels where like this one is meant to take a pistol magazine pouch. So this is just a standard like double uh, or, or, you know, like double it's stack. stack Kiwi. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and so, and you could probably do other things on this too. Yeah, yeah. I don't imagine it's specific to the S-Tacs. But um, basically the little two clip one will run a pistol pouch. What I like about this, I don't even think I'm, no, because in the last section I had my belt off. So basically it's just meant, you don't even have to take your belt off to throw this just on. Clip it through the belt. You literally just clip it on, yeah. right? And so that'll take basically any mag I'm gonna run minus single stacks. And then there's a, 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 this is like the mod two that's a little bit wider. So you can run, you know, like a standard taco or whatever. Well, it's an HSGI taco. Yeah. So it'll run anything from 5.56 to 7.62. Right, so that can run everything. And then they've got the mod three one where you can actually stack both of those on it. Okay. So you can do a pistol and a rifle pouch on this one thing and literally just have, one thing and I'm ready for pistol and rifle. I think that's a really good, like these came in and I'm like, again, you're a battle belt guy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm inherently not. So I go, I will use the shit out of this. Yeah, yeah that's much more your speed. Like this is my jam right here. I'm yeah. all about that. So um, we've got those, let's see, just kind of moving on. Gloves, I'm pretty loyal to pig gloves. Um, so these are just, you know, the, the, best. The, the standard uh, yep. the pig gloves. And then also in the winter, I rock the winter pig gloves. Which make a giant difference. They do because these are reasonably warm but with good. reasonable dexterity. Yep. And typically it's like, you can get some really warm gloves with no dexterity. You can get really good dexterity, no warmth. It's like, this is a pretty good hybrid of both. Yep. So big fan of those. I rock the exact same ears as you, sword and behind the necks. I don't even know the damn model, whatever it is, Pro X, Supreme Pro X. Yeah, Supreme Pro X neck bands. Um, just kind of moving in no particular order. Depending on what's happening at the range, take this. Collis, range finder. Range finder um, from uh, Collis. It's been really good. Um, really only doing that, at, primarily if I'm doing zeros. Yeah, yeah, You know, if I'm doing zeros. Some I'll... distant stuff like in the Joe movie or video. Yeah. The what? Oh, the Joe. Joe Dawson Joe. video. I thought you said Job, like the book of Job. Um, oh, I'm surprised you know that reference. Yeah, well, I know things here and there. <laughs> um, so iPro uh, Oakley M frames. So I'm rocking them now. Most of you have never seen these eyes. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> People get freaked out when they see my eyes. They're beady. Um, well, they are a little beady. Um, so these are cool because you can just uh, take this little thing, uh, this that little clip off, and then you can pop in clears. You can pop in your little orange ones 80s for action movie. whoever wears those. Um, and it comes in a nice little case. These have been great. These are like, I don't know. These came from US Elite Gear like a long time ago. They're like 160, 170 yep. bucks. So um, if you're ever looking for those, there you go. I also do rock on occasion, these ones from Hunter's Gold. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Now, these don't look the best on my face. But Can you see real quick? Let's do a wardrobe change. Take I those off. Take them off. I don't Take think I off. look the coolest right now, no. but the actual lens technology is pretty spectacular. Like the lenses themselves are spectacular. It's like okay. a dude trying to justify his Coke bottle glasses. Okay. Um, they were a gift, but I do wear them. Um, so uh, I do rock those. And especially, I tell you one thing, low light, no light, these change your life. Yeah, those are nice. Um, incredible. So slings, I only brought uh, technically two as a reference. There you go. Yep, thank you. Uh, so these are from Sly Tactical. We've been with those guys um, for a long time and um, use the hell out of their gear. This is a padded two point uh, sling here on double QDs. This is a non padded. This is a single QD and then an HK clip, their proprietary one. There's more of like sub guns. Yeah. So. Yeah, I actually got that for my 416. Um, oh, did you? That's what I got a that. Low one profile for. sling for that? Yeah, and I just kind of thought multicam would be cool in that. I don't know. It just it just spoke to me huh. and I wanted it. Um, All yeah. American made, which is nice. Yeah, uh, really, really great slings. And there is a uh, what's, what's our promo code there? I think it's nine. Oh, I think man. it's 1911 Syndicate. I think it's 1911 Syndicate. Yeah. It's definitely down in the video description. So if you guys ever yep. need slings, um, check it out. Really can't recommend that enough. That's been a Almost Staple since the, incep the inception inception yeah. of our channel, they've yep. they've been with us. Um, my toolkit, that's called a flathead. That's called a Phillips. That's hey. right, boys. Hey, uh, Allen keys, little torque wrenches. I don't again. Have, good job. I don't have the fancy fix it sticks. That would be great. Um, I'm too busy spending money on other things to get um, nice tools. And then uh, what do we got? Shot timer. It's really about all that's left. Couple sharpies in there. Yeah. Throw this one in there too. Hollow sun. Cares. Hollow sun tools. Basic stuff like that. That, looking around. Range gear. That's the range gear. Yeah. Okay, talking about outdoor gear, everyone. Um, so let me do this. Let me take you from my feet to my head, okay? <laughs> that's that's how we're gonna start this. So at my feet, one, uh, an animal. Um, so I love these boots more than I can possibly. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Jeez. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I'll navigate as we go. So these are the... Um, Solomon Forces, US Elite Gear. Um, we used to do a couple videos with them. They have this like collab they do with Solomon. I think it's like the Sua Sponte Mark III. Yep. I believe is what they are. I don't even think they make them anymore, so there's no point in lingering, but if they still make them, my God, I love these. What do you, what do you? So these are from the beginning of the channel. I mean, I think I've had these three and a half years. These are the Loa Zephyrs. Mm. We did a video on them. They are the only boots I've worn since then. They still have a ton of tread, look brand new. Yeah. I mean, these are my ideal range boot kick ass so my next you want to do your pants or still staying on your well, feet i'm staying on foot okay. with, with this bad boy um so these are dry shots our friend buster uh turned us onto these and like the reality is sometimes we're out it's wet it's cold it could be muddy and if it's just unknown we don't really know we know it's not going to be 90 degrees but we don't know what degree of winter weather we're going to get yeah. these things are a godsend these things are rated down to like from like 50 to like minus 30 yeah. or something. It's yep. crazy. They're completely waterproof. They're tanks. Um, they're not that expensive. Yeah, the range is from 65 to minus 50. Um, okay. So these really are like for a hard use boot in all weather, they are incredible. Yep. Um, well, we'll just keep working up. So pants, um, Oh boy. So I, I get asked about these <laughs> pants all the time. Um, so they're from Fjall Raven. Uh, these are the Fjall Raven Kebs. I've got like five pairs of these. I just got the new ones that came out. Very excited about that. Um, they're really pretty slick. They've got ventilation that runs. Get ready, everyone. Whew, look out. Look at that. And then I'm not trying to hide. I'm not trying to flex on anyone here. I'm not it's trying to. It's overexposed. It's overexposed. Okay. Dude. Okay. Whatever. And then down low here. Oh, wow. Calf shot. Calf shot, okay. Um, they're like my all-time favorite pants. I very rarely wear any of my tactical pants anymore. I mean, it's very uncommon that I wear them. Yeah. I wear these almost everywhere. Um, they still refuse to let me into their pro discount program because they reserve that for like hikers and shit, but it's like, it's all good. I'll keep selling pants for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I rock uh, most of the time when we're on the range, Norarms. Uh, it's a Norwegian, uh, funny, both foreign companies. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, s Swedish. Swedish, right? Uh, Norwegian. I love all their pants. I've bought every pair except for one. I have spent, I did the math one time, just with our shoots, like 47 days 
of total time in yeah. these pants yeah. on top of my other jobs. Yeah, yeah. They're the best all around combat pants. You know, I can I can show a little inner thigh. Oh, well, okay. We just the NVS, the nut ventilation yeah, system. Yeah, NVS, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then also, if you want to get a little breathage down to the calf, we can always unzip the calf too. Mm -hmm. So I can get some calf ventilation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they double up on the knee pad uh, fabric, so there's already kind of built in knee pads that you can stack other knee knee pouches on. Yeah. Love these pants. They've lasted forever. Yeah. It's basically what I wear, even at home watching TV, I'll just throw these on. Yeah, he's a true tactical asshole, yeah. everyone. That um, is I. Down to his core. <laughs> yep. Um, up top, uh, so funny, we're wearing the exact same jacket. I would, um, here's my word of caution on this. Uh, Sitka Arrowhead was basically a division of Sitka that they spun up. It's meant to be like the Arc'teryx leaf for Sitka. Um, and whoever runs Sitka had the wise idea like six months after they launched the leaf line to get rid of it. Um, we did a couple of their first videos. It's still, I would tell you, probably my all time favorite gear. Um, they, they didn't make pants, they made some shell pants, but beyond that, you know, it was jackets, base layers, all that kind of stuff. This is my all time favorite jacket. Um, we're wearing the same thing, except this one's multi cam, otherwise, same thing. And, and I got a hood yeah. on this. I have three of these in different colors. It's like my all time favorite jacket. I don't understand how the jacket performs so well, but it's a great jacket. It's incredible, so. um, but you can't really get it. Beyond that, for me, uh, living in Utah, obviously, super diverse climate. Most of my gear is a combination of Sitka Arrowhead, Beyond Clothing. You'll occasionally see some Arc'teryx leaves, some cry stuff like that, but um, it's a lot of Sitka beyond um, maybe a couple other odds and ends in there, and a lot, lot of Fjall Raven on, on the base. Yep. Um, beyond clothing, so if I'm going into the you know outdoors, like hey, me and the uh, coyote down there are just going to go you know shoot and kind of be out and roaming around. There's some other essentials I do like to bring. Um, I always typically throw Nod's helmet. And um, these are our in NVGs, our NVGs rugged, yep. ruggedized night vision. Um, we got these from Heat uh, yep. last year. Uh, High-end armament technology. They're a night vision shop out yep. of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I like these because they're not delicate at all. No, um, you could you, abuse those. Could you get better nods? Uh, better, maybe maybe from a quality perspective, but probably not better from a ruggedness perspective. Yeah. And like, I mean, I literally just throw these in, in my helmet, throw it in my, my console when I'm going outside and it's like, hey, if I'm out after dark, it's fun. Or if, you know, cool. whatever weird shit popped off. And beyond that, my other sort of essential um, thing is I wear these Hill People chest rigs. Um, you've probably seen them in plenty of videos before, but basically, you know, you just go on and, and this thing, basically, I just don't want to hit the mic is why I'm not putting it on. And this sits right here. Yeah. For me, when I'm moving around, I don't like a lot of weight on my hips, on my belt. Yeah. Um, you know, it's part of the reason battle belts, not as yeah, much my thing. I, I, I'm more of a chet. We were talking about a buddy of yours from special operations world yeah. who's very similar. Um, yeah. 20 years in. No big deal. Yeah. He wants it all on his chest. No battle belt either. Yeah. So. so in terms of what I keep in here when I'm out, um, so the firearm will vary, but I'll tell you my most common answer. HK USP9. Uh, this is my most common thing that I have on me when I'm in the outdoors. Um, it's a pretty stock um, USP, but it has the LEM trigger in it. I like that because it's, I, I, I'm just such a huge fan of the LEM trigger, right? It's double action only, but you go to the wall, then it breaks and then it resets and it's really cool. I love this. It's just got the HK night sights on it. Beyond that, James Williamson threw in the trigger and tuned it up a little bit for me and it's a great gun. Um, so I'll have that in my pouch. Okay, other things in the pouch, usually I'll have like one, maybe two backup mags. I mean, I'll have these loaded because that's not the purpose of today, but um, I'll have that. Real basic, uh, you know, a Sharpie. Um, and then in the main pouch, typically I'll have uh, a tourniquet, uh, a knife. This is not at all an outdoor knife. It's a freaking karambit, but um, you know, whatever. It It'll is still, still cut a cutting edge. Yeah. And then um, typically I'll take my little cloud defensive light and just throw that in here. And if I'm just moving around, cool, man. I've got really nothing weighing me down on bottom. I've got a pistol, I've got down and dirty med, I got a light, I got a knife, like that's all I really need to do. So for me, moving around the outdoors and just kind of going out in the desert in general, that's what I got on me. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing honorable mention is I bought a Garmin Fortrex, the little GPS units um, for when we're out, like snowmobiling in the back country, we're hiking around. That'll work off even weak cell phone signal and still maintain your position. Yeah. Um, so if you had to send an SOS, um, unfortunately, just flying down here, it's a little hard to fly with everything, but that's the only honorable mention I have for that. So. And uh, last thing is clarification, so I don't have to answer it. Um, 
I think I might've said this from Hill People Gear, but this is the standard size. This is like the full size kit bag. Um, they have different sizes. This is the full size, okay? In my experience, the full size is probably what most of you would want. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. That's a lot of gear. We had to cover a lot of stuff, so we had to go pretty quick. But we do want to give a special shout out to our friends over at Firearms Legal Protection. Um, they provide you insurance for uh, legally justified self-defense scenarios, um, regardless of state. They have different plans. One for, you know, if you're in your state, one that basically covers you uh, anywhere in the U.S. Um, unlimited attorney fees. There's an attorney hotline. There's bail bond stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of perks that you get there. We would encourage you to check that out. The code is 1911. Saves you um, a good chunk off of the different memberships. Appreciate the support from those guys, and we will see you next week.